Hello and welcome to Ham Radio Comms. I'm Ed and one UHF. And today I'm going to go over the initial settings on a, on this radio, the FT891 Yesu. That I want to set up all the initial parameters first. I think it's a really good idea to set certain things up for uh, comfort in operating the radio and to reduce the power so you don't make a mistake when you're hooking up the antenna for the first time if the SWR is incorrect. So a few things like that I think are necessary. I think it's a really good idea to go through for the, and change the initial settings. So we're going to go through that right now. I'm not going to go through every menu settings. That would take hours for all the different uh, settings. But just the initial setup that you want to do when you get the FT891. Or for that matter, any similar radio, it would be the same, uh, very similar procedure on, on setting things up. So let's get uh, right to it. We're going to start at the very beginning. The menu is set up with 01-01 .01 is the first one. And as you see, there's going to be different, um, I call them chapters and pages. I know another YouTuber calls them um, uh, books and chapters, and I like chapters and pages. Chapter 1, page 1, for instance. And then, so this is the uh, select knob here. And here you would move up and down as you turn this knob right here, which is below the, the volume knob. And then all you do is just push it in. To highlight it and then you can turn it and change the settings all right so the AGC I'm not going to touch right now but the first thing is the LCD contrast so you want to make this comfortable to view so you push it in and as you can see it's changing the contrast from white out all the way to too dark I like to do it where the background starts to uh, turn dark and it gives it a nice uh, contrast so it's usually for me seven or eight so we'll do eight for now and there's the dimmer backlit. It's really supposed to be backlight, but you know. And this is the all the uh, the lights that's on the buttons. So if you look at the the buttons below the display, you'll see them getting brighter and darker. So if you're always in a dark environment, you make it lighter. If you're in a light environment, often you make it uh, brighter. And so. Um, I don't want to use a lot of battery power. It's going to be for portable. So I'm going to put it right in the middle, right around 8. Push it in to deselect it and move on. Dimmer LCD. So this is just the brightness of the actual um, one itself. And again, it depends on your operating environment. So I'm going to put it right around 7. The dimmer transmit busy, that's this light right here that comes on when you're receiving or transmitting so that one there, you'll see right now how it's going to, you can't see it unfortunately right now. This is going to turn brighter and, and lighter. So we'll do, um, that's for the transmit, we'll do seven right in the middle like they had it. I'm going to keep going until I find stuff that makes sense. As you can see up here, it's uh, chapter four, page three. Beacon interview, that's uh, the beacon is, uh, this radio will, will act as a beacon. So if you were gonna become part of the beacon network for uh, 28 megahertz or 50 megahertz, which is you know 10 and six meters, and you wanna have a permanent beacon set up, you don't have to be around, this will send off beacons. And uh, you could do that, I'm not gonna do that now. CW operator, you can come back and do those noise blanker the beep level is something most of these things are going to be ergonomic and and ease of use things and safety issues you want to do right away so the beep level as you can hear it goes up to 100 and um, i don't like loud beeps i turn it right down to five just so i know i'm hitting the button but not enough to bother me and there it is very soft and here it is at 40. you know you can go all the way up to 100 pretty loud yeah maybe 10 yeah that's good I could hear that and here's the RF and squelch choices and there's the um, so if you had squelch and there's the indicator by the way um, if you had squelch you're gonna use that if you're gonna re use repeaters a lot so if you're gonna be on um, this will do repeaters so for uh, 28 megahertz and 50 megahertz 6 and 10 meters you could do repeaters there's not many of those around anymore uh, but if you were gonna use those you, you're better off keeping it on squelch it'll be quiet until you hear a signal otherwise for HF you really want to do RF 
cat ray that's if you're going to use it to control thing you know you're going to control the radio other things you want to use the cat ray but we're going to skip that for now a lot of these you're going to go back in once you're uh, setting up some kind of equipment with it we're not going to do that right now here we go transmit timeout timer let's say that you're sitting on your microphone in the car or something like that you could be transmitting not even know it so you want it to, you really want it to shut off automatically after a certain amount of time you're not going to talk that long so i usually turn this on and it can go up to let's see how far it goes 30 minutes that's a lot of transmit non-stop isn't it you could burn out your radio that way i usually do five minutes i'm not going to talk more than five minutes straight and if i'm sitting on the microphone or some reason it's transmitting it'll shut off automatically so we'll do that five minutes this is very similar automatic power off if you forget your radios on you walk away it could be on portable power it could be in your car and the car is not running you don't want to drain your battery so it's good to have the radio shut off after a while why have it be um, cooking there if you're not going to be using it if you're going to be walking around the house and you want it on that's fine but i still what i do is i turn it it goes up to 12 hours i usually put it on i don't know two four hours something like that i'm going to do four hours in four hours it'll shut off fan control normal or a contest if you're going to do contests with this, with this radio um, then the fan I think the fan is running all the time but we're gonna we're gonna do um, normal it comes on when you're transmitting once you get into like AM cuts that's when you're uh, really getting to the radio later on after you use it for a while you're gonna play with those things but for now the initial again we're gonna do just the things that we need uh, let's see what else we should do here the FM mic select and FM out level, uh, those are, that's um, not power out. Those are levels for the mic and, and so forth. And you want to change those once you're doing other things. Sideband. See, miss you. Oh, here we go. This one's really cool. The single sideband transmit bandwidth. This is really cool. Uh, you could change the transmit bandwidth uh, i like that about the 857 and 897 uses as well uh, except you have to buy separate filters and not only do those filters work on receive but a lot of people don't realize you could change settings in those radios and this radio as well to change the bandwidth that you're transmitting to make your voice sound better if you're trying to reach uh dx stations it's better to have a little bit narrower bandwidth so for instance, uh, let's see, like 300 to 2700, that's a little bit more narrow. That's a 2400 bandwidth. That's perfect for a little more punch to, to get longer distance. But if you're gonna do rag chews on 40 meter nets or something like that, you're gonna do Envis, three, 400 miles. Um, I like to do a, a bigger bandwidth. So let's see what we have here. 100 to 3000 that's a 2900 bandwidth so something like that maybe this one here 2800 here's a 2600 bandwidth i'm going to leave that right there 26 that's a nice compromise between the two for having a good bandwidth but yet reaching out so that's one of the ones i do right away AM dial step. I'm going to change that for myself. It gives you an idea of the kind of things if you know you want right away. And this is one of them. Um, I like listening to um, long distance AM broadcast stations at night on one of my uh, long wire antennas. I moved from a location that had 150 foot long wire. Man, I really picked up, uh, I was up on a hill too, and I really picked up some really good AM stations at night halfway across the country. I'm on the East Coast, and I'm picking up from Chicago, Baltimore, everywhere at night. It's just a lot of fun. I like it. Uh, walk around, you know, I'm working around the house. I'm listening to AM uh, uh, late at night sometimes. And you see, it's amazing how far you can get a uh, medium wave. Uh, except it takes forever spinning the dial to get to the different stations. So I'm going to change this right now to the max, which is 100, 100 dial step. And this way it's easier to get through the, get through the stations. Equalizers will play with another time. And here we go. Here's the power outputs. You really want to change these um, if you're portable, especially, but when you first get a radio and you're hooking up different antennas if you're not sure what the swr is you'll want to be pumping full 100 watts into like a nine to one or some or even worse uh, antenna or if you have an open 
you don't want to stress your uh, your finals. So HF single sideband power, um, I like to knock it down right to 25 for safety and I could change that uh, once I'm all set up with the antennas and stuff. Again, this is the initial setup. So let's do 25 and that's good for portable. I'll be running at 25 watts for portable. I'll be uh, going out this summer. AM power is 25, that's the max. AM is the max, so again, that's too high. So I'm gonna knock down, down to 10. And HF power, and that's gonna be the power out on other than single sideband or AM. So CW and RTTY, other digital modes and so forth. So HF power, we're gonna knock that down to 25 as well for now. And again, on digital, you don't wanna run 100 watts anyway. They have a separate uh, power output settings for the 50 meter, the six meter band. And this is especially dangerous because you're looking at, um, especially like on the digital modes and CW, you're looking at 100 watts of power out on um, on FM, for instance, which is a, a full duty mode at 100 watts at six meters, which is a VHF. That's not good for your finals uh, to talk long on that at 100 watts. So we're gonna knock that right down to 25. This is, you really want to do this. I highly recommend it on any radio. AM power again. This is on the max. Let's knock that down to 10. Pick whatever setting. Then the single sideband on 50 meters. That's going to be in an opening. That's going to be really rare. Uh, so I'm going to knock that down right to 25. We could always change that later. Very easy. All right. Single sideband mic gain. I'll leave it at the default, but this is something you're gonna be changing right away as well because you wanna use the ALC, talk into the microphone normally, and you wanna set the um, the mic gain so that the ALC is at the proper location. We can't do that now, we're not set up with our dummy load and things like that. So that is gonna stay until we um, look at the ALC and talk into the radio. Same thing with the AM mic gain, FM mic gain, all the same issue, you wanna use the ALC. Same with the rest, all of these. The data gain is when you use, um, if you're gonna use a data mode, you're gonna be setting those. Tuner select. I'm hooking up a tuner to this right away. It's gonna be um, a Z11 Pro 2, and that's gonna be my uh, portable tuner. And that one, so we're gonna set that up now. I'll have to go back in in a few minutes when I hook everything together. Off, external. External is going to be an external tuner, whether it's the uh, FC50 that you can buy for this or any other aftermarket ones. Uh, but they have to be FC40 or FD, FC50 compatible. I think FC30 doesn't work on this radio. Um, most of the newer LDG generic or other uh, tuners are going to be FC40 compatible. And the same with um, MFJ tuners, which are very fast, very nice. If you if you find a good one, doesn't have a problem. Um, they work really well. So that's for the external going through um, the accessory, the actually the DIN port. And the ATAS is the ATAS system that Yesu makes uh, automatic tuners that work at the um, there they work at the antenna location, not in the shack. Uh, lamp is what I'm putting it on. It says lamp, but it really stands for linear amplifier. And that's going to go through a, um, a different jack in the back. Uh, when I show the video on hooking up the tuner, you'll see that the, the jack that that uses for the ampli. It's the same uh, switching output in the back for uh, using an amplifier. So if, you have a, uh, if you're going to use a linear amp or something, it would also be lamp. If you can use Vox, you would do that. If you have a Vox microphone you're using right away, then you would be changing that while you're in here. Reset. I always do a reset when I first get the radio. I just did that. That's why I'm doing all the settings right now. So the factory uh, has factory reset, and you could do different versions with all the memories or not. While you're in here, you want to write these down. The main version. This is the firmware version of the radio. You have the main version, the DSP version, and the LCD version. Different firmware updates for the different parts of the radio. Um, we have 01-07, and for the DSP, you can see uh, those settings as well. And those are gonna be, uh, I checked, and those are the most recent versions of the software. And that's it, we're at the end. So all you do is um, 
hit the F key to get back into the main part of the radio. And that's it. So that's, um, that's what I like to change in the very beginning to make the radio safe and easy to use. And then you're going to be going in to make changes for the frequency steps when you turn the dial and all those things you just saw in there. And that's going to be for another time if I do a video on that. But probably not. There's just so much on all the different ones. You would just look in the manual and see what settings you should use. All right, that'll, I'm going to wrap up the video there. Thanks so much for watching Ham Radio Comms. Please like and subscribe. Um, I'm making videos all the time on my ham radio adventures. Um, I just did moon bounce this year, so I'll be doing more of that, which is really exciting. Um, but uh, stay tuned next time, and I uh, hope you come back, and we'll see you soon. 73 from N1UHF and ham radio comms. Take care.